I'd like to share with you five of my favorite shrubs that are just excellent at drawing pollinators into our yard. Now normally we find herbaceous perennials being the most common things that are put in pollinator gardens. There are so many different varieties to pick from flower colors, different varieties, different sizes like salvia, blanket flower, cone flower, just to name a few. But I think shrubs offer us a nice contrast. You can get more size to the plant. That shrub can go for years where you don't have to touch it. So I hope you like the shrubs we're going to look at today. We're going to start with Emerald Carousel Barberry. Now this is a barberry that you may not be able to find in your area. They are considered invasive in some areas. I believe they take over some of the woodland type areas. For us in our region, I'm just glad plants can make it through the winter. So we're going to take what we can get. Now look at those yellow flowers on that barberry. Just absolutely a beautiful plant. And those yellow flowers are excellent at drawing in these little honeybees here that you're going to see. Take a close look at those legs. He's got some pollen on the bottom there. Now as that bee flies from flower to flower, that pollen can get attached to anywhere on its body, the mouth parts, the abdomen. Now as it moves from flower to flower, it's transferring that pollen, the male part, to the female. That's where we're going to get the fertilization and how we get our seeds and our fruits that form. Here's the fruit on the Emerald Carousel Barberry. Now the birds absolutely love these. And I was surprised I was doing just a little bit of research on this plant that it's actually got some excellent health benefits. It's got a compound or antioxidant called berberin. Now do your own due diligence. I have not tried this in my juicer just yet. So pollination, you know, it's just an act of transferring that pollen from point A to point B and it's really just kind of random. The insects are actually out there harvesting food. They're looking for pollen. They're looking for nectar. It just happens that that pollen goes along for the ride. So a pollinator is actually called a vector. And you can also have wind or rain it can be considered vectors. Let's take a quick look at this diagram of the flower. On the left there, you've got the stamen, which makes up the anther and the filament. That's the male part of the flower. This is where the pollen's gonna be. On the right here, we've got the pistil. That makes up the female parts of the flower, the stigma, the style, the ovary. So as an insect's moving over the flower, it can attract and attach that pollen to its body or mouth parts, and it flies around to different flowers. That stigma is oftentimes sticky, and that's where the pollen either drops off or is deposited. Let's go back to the Emerald Carousel Barberry. I did want to mention this is a plant that does rejuvenate very well. Now rejuvenation is just kind of a starting over, cutting it back very hard and letting that new growth, and then you're going to get great flowering to boot. There's a picture of it right there pruned back to about 18 inches. And there's the new growth on the bottom right there. Now, four out of the five shrubs we're gonna talk about today, I have done some pruning videos on them. So if you wanna subscribe, you can get some notifications on something like that, or go to the channel page back and you'll find those pruning videos. Amber Jubilee Nine Bark, one of my favorites, just an absolutely beautiful shrub. And the Nine Bark's the advantage of it, they got so many different leaf colors to choose from. The purples, the orange, the gold, the yellows. So it's just an excellent shrub. They all have white flowers. As you see here, this is so a purple leaf variety. There are green leaf varieties. And then of course the golden varieties. That white flower is what's gonna draw them in in the spring. And then their flowers will fade to kind of a, a reddish into a brown as they mature. I wanted to make sure we took a look at this here. Even though this plant's done flowering, this is a nine bark. Look at all the different insects on this. So what on earth would be drawing in pollinators after the flower? Well, this plant, every year I tend to get aphids on it. And I don't mind at all. I actually leave aphids on any plant I get. Those aphids are ingesting that plant for their food source they're excreting a honeydew. Now what happens with that honeydew, you're gonna get your pollinators we just looked at, insects like bees, flies, wasps. They're gonna come back in, they're harvesting that carbohydrate for a food source. So just another great way to offer that diversity in your landscape. Leave the insects alone whenever you can. Let's move on to the Caraganas or Siberian pea shrub. Now pea shrubs were planted all over our state in the upper northern plains. They were used in the shelter belts for the soil erosion control. It's an incredibly hardy plant. We'll take it very, very dry. So if you look here, this is a weeping form. It's been grafted, so it's very unique in that respect. 
all those yellow flowers you see, man, they draw in a lot of really nice honeybee activity. I watched this thing throughout several weeks and it was just constant how many bees were on there. Now the caraganas, you can also find them in tree form. That's been trained like that. If you didn't prune up those lower suckers, it would probably revert just to a very large shrub. And look at this one over here. I came across that in somebody else's yard. And I just, that's a specimen. That's one of the most beautiful weeping caraganas that I've ever seen. Just absolutely gorgeous. Let's move on to spireas. This is a big group of plants with a lot of different sizes, flower colors, leaf colors. The double plate gold spirea is one of my favorite smaller spireas. It's just got a beautiful spring pink flower. It's also going to repeat bloom a little bit in the fall. The double plate is a series, so you can find doozy, uh, red, big bang, and it's just a little bit different variation on the flower colors, maybe the leaf color. But the double plate brings in those bumblebees. Take a look at this one here, just cruising around. The bumblebees have those air sacs, makes them just look like they're just floating. Really fun to watch those bumblebees. You know, as I said, spireas is a big group. I've just mentioned a couple extra ones here like Superstar, Gold Mound. Ashleaf spirea, I wanted to mention, is a false spirea. Sorbaria is the genus, but this little spirea draws in some insects you're never going to see on anything else. And that's one of the things I want to mention too about creating a diverse pollinator garden. The more flower colors you have blooming at different times, different scents, colors, that's what makes it attractive to so many different insects throughout the year. So again, great for the gardens. If I was going to pick one shrub, I would probably pick spireas throughout all those different varieties. The one on the bottom I've listed here, that's fire gold, can get quite large up around, you know, six feet. Okay, quick fire hydrangea. One of the most beautiful hydrangeas there is. This is kind of a midsummer picture now where it had a white flower early in the spring where it started to turn that pink, but just a prolific bloomer. Now, I don't let mine get eight feet. I actually keep this at around that four foot level. This is actually three plants there and I keep it kind of pruned in a hedge fashion. But look at the white flowers we've got here with the insect bouncing around there. This is gonna be the shrub today that I'm gonna talk about that has draws in more insects than any other one. It's just absolutely incredible. Just a flurry of different insects there with that beautiful close-up of that honeybee there. As I mentioned, it's got that white flower. Very, very attractive as it comes out. So this is when the pollinators start coming in about midsummer, And then as it transitions back into that pink, those start disappearing. But what a great, great hydrangea. There again, back to that pink color. Flanked here by a nice coleus with that red throat. Isn't that a nice picture? And then a close-up again of that pink flower there. Let's go back and we'll visit a little close-up of those insects one more time as we finish up this presentation. Thanks again for watching Garden Hike. I sure appreciate it. We'll see you again next video.